Can you give me a woo? <laughs> You're awake. Who's ready to get into the word? Yes. Now, if you know me well, this is what I like to do. If you can grab your Bible, or if you're super technical and you've got your phone, you can grab that as a symbol. I just want you to give it a squeeze. <laughs> Just as almost a prophetic act. Lord, we just love your word. And we're hungry, God, for more of your word, more of you, because you are the word. And your word says that uh, your word is like fire, like a hammer that breaks the rock to pieces. Your word is alive. It is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. And Father, we just love your word. We pray that it would hang off our hearts and our, our, our tongues tonight like honey, like you say in the Psalms, Lord Jesus. Father, I ask for a fresh impartation tonight, a fresh hunger for the word of God, a fresh hunger for truth. And Father, if the word comes like a hammer and breaks some rocks to pieces, let it be. Amen. Let it be. Lord, let anything hard that's, that's not of you, anything that uh, is superfluous, that doesn't need to be there, let your word reveal and uh, do surgery even and uh, bring healing and wholeness and power and life. Your words are spirit and life. So we receive your word. We open up our hearts tonight, wide open to hear what the Spirit of the, the Lord has to say to us. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Well, I hope that we're whetting your appetite with this series, this term, this uh, course on open heavens, which is all about true worship, spiritual warfare, prayer in the heart of David. Now, can anyone tell me, what brings an open heaven? I'm going to open it up. Just any ideas. What brings an open heaven? An open heart. An open heart? Yes. Open heart. That's good. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Great answer. Yes. Faith. Hunger. Spiritual hunger. We're going to talk about that tonight. Faith. Yes. Faith is the atmosphere of heaven. Atmosphere for the miraculous. It's the currency of heaven, isn't it? Fear of God. We talked about that last week. The fear of God brings an open heaven. Not talked about enough. Desperate desperation. Yes. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. These are all good things. Some other things. Intimacy. Yes. We're going to talk about David tonight. He was all about intimacy. Passion. Yes. Yes, men and women after God's own heart. Here's another one that may not be so popular. Malachi. What happens in Malachi? What brings an open heaven? Yes, your, your tithing. Tithing. Ooh. It's explicit in Scripture. Tithing brings an open heaven. Do you remember that Scripture? He says, bring your whole tithe into the house and see if I won't open up the heavens. Now, we don't preach a lot on, on money and, and giving, and uh, we really believe that the Holy Spirit moves on people's hearts to do that, but it's explicit in Scripture that tithing is something that we're called to do in obedience to the Lord, and it brings an open heaven. So all these aspects that can bring an open heaven, what happens when an open heaven comes? Wow. Lives get transformed, healed, set free, saved. You know, I'm reminded of one of the prophetic visions I had of the move of God to come and that people would walk in the doors of the actual sanctuary of the church and demons would leave, would scream, flying out of people <laughs> because of the geography of a place where that there had been prayer and worship and spiritual hunger and intimacy and all these things happening, an open heaven. And this can happen in a move of God. And I pray that the things that we talk about in this unit won't just be information because that won't do you any good. <coughs> You'll just take it in and dump it. You know, you ever crammed for an exam? 
<laughs> never remembered anything. I went to uni, I did that a lot. <laughs> don't, don't ask me anything that I can remember from uni days. <laughs> I just remember doing it and being really tired all night, cramming. <laughs> but see if there's revelation of who Jesus is. If there's something that inspires and incites you to go after him with all your heart, because that brings an open heaven, we've done our job. That's our prayer for you. It's heart stuff that brings the open heaven. David was a man after God's own heart. And I want to um, bring your attention to the appendix. If you've got a little appendix there. Have we got a spare one? Here. Appendix. Now we're going to be going deep into the life of David. Who's excited about that? I'm excited. I'm learning new things. And this is the one scripture that David is most famous for. And so I thought, we really need to look at the scripture. And so what I've done here is write down a number of different versions. So, so this is a really good exercise in how to study the Word of God. If you find one scripture, you can get online. There's um, a website called Bible Gateway, and you can click on different versions, and you can go deep and study into that one verse. And the Word of God is like a diamond, isn't it? It's multifaceted. There's so many different meanings. And so I want you to look at what this verse is in different versions. The NIV says, After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Wow. King James, I've just bolded it there. He shall fulfill all my will. Wow. New Life Version. That version says, He will please my heart. These are all aspects of the heart of David that brings an open heaven. Common English Bible. I have found David. Everyone say found. Found. Now there's a word. God is searching. Will he find the heart in you? He is actively searching. It says he actively seeks for true worshippers, right? And here is his cry of joy. I have found <laughs> this one man, David, Jesse's son, a man who shares my desires. Man after my own heart. Here's another key shares my desires. Whatever my will is, he will do. do. Complete obedience. All of God's will. Expanded Bible, here it uh, expounds it as the kind of man I want. <laughs> wow. This is a pretty good resume. Who'd like this resume? <laughs> David was spoken of extremely well by the Lord himself. This is the kind of man I want. A man whose heart is like mine. A man after my own heart. He will do or accomplish all I want him to do. And this is one of my favorites, the message. And he says of David, he's a man whose heart beats to my heart. A man who will do what I tell him. Passion translation. A man who always pursues my heart. Do you pursue his heart? Yes. Do you go after him and say, God, what's on your heart? What's your desire? What do you love? What do you like? What do you hate? What are you thinking about? What's on your heart? You know, it says of David, he always inquired of the Lord. You'll find that in Scripture over and over again. And he inquired of the Lord, and he asked of the Lord, and he inquired of the Lord, and he inquired of the Lord. Here are some really powerful keys. He pursued God's heart and accomplished all that I have destined him to do. Are you determined to fulfill a call? 
because you'll get a lot of opposition, you'll get a lot of resistance, you'll get a lot of people saying it's too hard. Your own voice will say it's too hard. But there was something about David, a man after God's own heart, who pursued, that's an action, right? He went after something. He pursued God's heart and accomplished all the will of God, everything God had destined him to do. God's word, I, I would love this to be said of me. Oh, this would be the ultimate. God spoke favorably about David. Now, you can get um, references and praise from many a man, but for God himself to speak well of you, for God himself to speak favorably of you, this was the ultimate. This is what we're going for. This was said of David. He will do everything I want him to do. The Voice Bible. He's the kind of king who will rule in ways that please me. He was trustworthy. God could trust his heart. Holman Christian Standard Bible. A man loyal to me. New Revised Standard Version. Who will carry out all my wishes. And the Living Bible, for he will obey me. There's a key. I encourage you to meditate on these scriptures. And it's key that it says, after removing Saul. Now we're going to come to that in coming weeks. Because the Saul spirit has to be removed. And we're going to be looking at the difference between David and Saul and how that plays out for us here in the last days. This is a word for now. This is a word for us. And I want to encourage you that what we're talking about in this unit is pivotal for what God wants to do in these last days. For the move of God that he's bringing, we have to get a hold of this. And I have no doubt that even if just one person takes a hold of these concepts and runs with it, you're going to turn the world upside down. You're going to change the world for Jesus. So I just want to um, put honour on the Word of God tonight. And, and we need to come to the Word with great awe. Because this stuff is eternal. This is Jesus. And so can I encourage you to come hungry each week? God, change my heart. God, I'm pursuing your heart tonight and all the days of my life. Come hungry to receive. Awesome. Well, homework reading is going to be Psalm 25 to 28. These are Psalms of David. We're dwelling in the heart of David. I'm so excited about that. And here we start, Psalm 25, 12 to 14, a Psalm of David. Who is the man that fears? Last week, Kristen, excellent uh, exhortation on the fear of the Lord, which is a key to an open heaven, the Davidic heart. Who is the man that fears, reverently fears and worships the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity or in ease. There will be a favor. There will be an ease in ministry. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't come across persecution or opposition, but there will be favor with this heart of David. He himself shall dwell in prosperity and his descendants shall inherit the earth. Love that word, inherit. The secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord is with those who fear him. And he will show them his covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. Wow. You know, God made us for companionship, for deep intimacy with him. This is only granted to those who fear him. Yes. And obey him. Remember Deuteronomy 28? If you obey my commands, here's a whole bunch of blessings. If you don't, here's a whole bunch of consequences. So God is a God of justice. And to these are available the secrets. Am I making you hungry tonight? The secrets. 
the deep inner things of his heart and revelations of the powerful covenant promises God makes with those who fear him. You know, for too long the church by and large has been happy to stay in immaturity, in the toddler stage. What does an untrained toddler do? It wants their own way. It goes around saying, mine, mine, mine. Do you remember when there was a whole phase in ministry about blab it and grab it, name it and claim it? Do you remember that? There was this hyper faith thing going on. And there were aspects of truth that you could draw out of it. But as I sought the Lord about this, you know, God, what do you think? Because that's what David would pray, right? Mm -hmm. He inquired of the Lord. And I really felt the Holy Spirit say to me, it's like a toddler. This guy, you know, toddler, as the father. He's an inheritor. Yes, those things are his. But in his immaturity, he's going, mine, that's mine, 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 mine. You know, I want that now. That's what a toddler does, right? And that was what it sounded like. But you know what God wants? He wants a church that grows up. He's looking for a bride in the last days. He's coming back for a bride. What is a bride? A companion, a friend. You know, it was just Mother's Day on Sunday. And I had a great day. I don't know, mum's here, if you had a wonderful day, I had a great, great day. And one, one of the things that really made my day was this beautiful card that my kids make um, every Mother's Day. And it's you know, handmade and they do little love hearts and colouring ins. But the most wonderful thing is reading their messages from the heart. And Genevieve, she's now 15, so she, she loves to write, you know, from the heart and, and she wrote a lot of wonderful things like thanks for everything you do mom and but the one thing that really um, leapt out of the page to me and just made my heart melt was she said and thanks mom for being my best friend <laughs> and it kind of just hit me she's at that age now that she has some maturity of thinking and the relationships evolved. Now she's not just someone who wants something from me all the time. You know, a toddler always needs something from you, right? You can't even go to the toilet without the toddler needing something from you, right? So, you know, showers were like my spa treatment for the day. <laughs> I was like, this is mummy's time. I'm actually going to have a shower for two minutes. Yay! It's like spa treatment, you know. <laughs> They're always wanting something, right? But I love this stage of um, where my kids are at, where they're evolving into not someone that just always wants something. She's now my friend. We just hang out. We go out shopping and we just do coffee and chat and hear each other's hearts, get to know one another. I love this discovery of knowing her now as a friend, a friend for life. And that's what God wants from us. He made us for companionship, yes. intimacy. Yes. He wants a people who will hear his heart. Yes. Their heartbeat beats as his heart. Reminds me of John on the bosom of the Lord Jesus. The prophet, by the way. That's why we need the prophetic. The true prophetic says, what about Jesus' heart? What's on his heart? Yes. David was a prophet. Yes. So that's why we're going so deep on this. This is important stuff. The church needs to grow up. And you know what? When you come to that place of friendship, Abraham was a friend of God. The secrets available. The tender things of his heart. The inclinations, the desires, knowing him, being content just to know him, just to be with him. That is a powerful place. When he is enough, and that was a place that David knew, a man after God's own 
heart. A friend hears your heart and loves your companionship. A close friend spends time with you listening, wants to see you fulfill the desires of your heart and knows what your deepest thoughts. This is what God wants from us, men and women, after God's heart. Do you know it's possible to do ministry and not even know God's heart? And we're going to go deep into that next week. <laughs> it's a dangerous, dangerous place. So open heavens concept. Understanding and possessing the heart of David is the secret to unlocking God's kingly authority. <laughs> the key of David that brings an open heaven of God's presence, favor, and kingship. Your kingdom come, your will be done, here on earth as it is in heaven. Now turn to Matthew 6 with me. Very, very key scripture. We sang it tonight. This is how Jesus taught us to pray. Anyone want to learn more about prayer? Yes we have one <laughs> who wants to learn how to pray effectively yes. well this is what the disciples asked of the Lord they said God how do we pray and this was what the Lord Jesus himself spoke our father in heaven hallowed be your name now in the amplified classic that hallowed means kept holy kept holy be your name yes. so let's just stop there the name of God is holy. holy you know the angels in heaven they don't just say it they cry it there's something desperate we just had the word desperate tonight about that <laughs> it has to be known it has to be made known. The angels don't just whisper. They cry, holy, holy, holy. You must know his name is holy. That's where it starts. And you know what? There's not enough spoken about he is holy. You need that revelation to really pray. His name must be kept holy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, kept holy be your name. Who you are is holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Sounds like an open heaven to me. On earth as it is in heaven, give us today our daily bread. You know, in an open heaven, I believe for daily fresh bread, revelation of Jesus. You know, every time I come to prepare for these nights, I, I say to the Lord, Lord, shall I go back to my old notes? Because we've done this Open Heavens unit in previous years, and some of you are interns, and, and you've been through it. And the Lord says, no, fresh. And I just feel it pour out. He's always wanting to bring fresh bread, because that brings an open heaven. Give us this day, Al. Daily. daily bread. You need a daily encounter with God. You need a daily revelation of Jesus. When you pick up the word, you need to pray, God, show me who you are. Every day. That's an open heaven. Amen. And then forgive us our debts. Forgiveness. Repentance brings an open heaven. Yes. Here as it is in heaven. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. There's victory over the enemy in an open heaven. Amen? Amen. Your kingdom come. Every other kingdom has to flee. Yes. Yeah. What happens when heaven comes? There's no sickness in heaven. There's no bondage in heaven. There's no lies in heaven. Get this, there's no unsaved in heaven. We need to get a hold of this. This can happen here on earth. And all the people shall see his glory, it says in the word. And you can be a gateway for this. 
am I inspiring you to go after him with all your heart? <laughs> you know, spiritual hunger comes when you know what to be hungry for. Yes. If you know there's more, you can hunger for it. If you read there's more, God, I want that. Yes. And I'm not settling for anything less. And the church is meant to be nothing less than an open heaven. And I'm going to pray and seek his face until I see it in this city, in this place. An open heaven. This is why we're doing the Heart of David, Open Heavens Unit. This is how Jesus taught us to pray. Now in the Passion Translation, I just want to read it out. Pray like this, Matthew 6, 9 to 10. Our Father dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name, who you are, be the center on which our lives turn. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's the start. Who he is, holy, is the center on which my life turns. The revelation of Jesus, his name. Manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it is in heaven. heaven. This is a command to pray this way. Nothing less than heaven here on earth. I'm excited. God, this is what you're bringing to this city and to this nation, and to the nations. His name is who he is. We are to pray that who Jesus is fully revealed, that Jesus would be fully revealed in his church, in this nation and the nations. When this truly happens, his kingdom will come. What is in heaven, his perfect will will come to earth. It's an open heaven. There is no sickness in heaven, no bondage or lies, no one saved in heaven. Jesus commanded us to pray and ask the Father to give us our daily bread. We are to ask for and desperately desire fresh revelation of Jesus every day. Everyone say, every day. Every day. Isn't that awesome? You can encounter him every day. A fresh facet of the diamond. So we want to look at what the true apostolic and prophetic foundation is. The keys to the kingdom. The true apostolic and prophetic is called to bring an open heaven. This is why we need the apostolic and prophetic. You know, we're familiar a lot with the pastoral here in the church. The shepherd and the pastoral is needed, but the pastoral is only one of five. One of fivefold that works in conjunction with all the rest. And it's clear in Ephesians that the foundation is the apostles and the prophets. So the apostolic and the prophetic must come forth in these last days. And what does that look like? Well, I want you to look at Matthew 16, 19. And this is a scripture about what is the destiny of the last days church. You want to know what the destiny is, what we're called to, what we can have, what Jesus died for, by the way. Matthew 16, 19. And I tell you that you are Peter. Now, Peter was an apostle. So he's speaking about the true apostolic. Okay. So I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys. Everyone say keys. Keys. That's important. Keys of the kingdom of heaven. Heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In some versions it says what you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. What you loose on earth has already been loosed in heaven. So in other words, heaven here on earth. Yeah. What happens in heaven will be here.